Best of r slash tales from tech support episode 74. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Sorry if this I sent the sub to post this in. I thought it might be more appreciated here. Recently the left controller on a certain console of mine decided it did not like to charge. I had to constantly dock, undock, resin kit, and power off power on. I bought a separate charger and it still had the same issue. I didn't want to replace it but my system is out of warranty. I filed a support ticket anyway and they sent me a ups label. I remembered reading about the Swedish fish theory and thought hey it can't hurt. I went to a local shop and bought some locally made candy. Tossed in the box and sent it on its merry way. I got a confirmation email last night they received it and a fixed email this morning with a return tracking number. My original estimate turnaround was 2 weeks but this was less than 24 hours. So yeah a little appreciation goes a long way. Thank you. Next. A recent post reminded me of this one from my days on the phone. User calls in asking how to shut down the audible alarm on a driver A. Me. There's a button on the back that silences the alarm but we should figure out why it's going off. Customer. It's too hot to work in the machine room today. I'll call you back tomorrow. Me. Wait. How hot is too hot? Customer. Like 110 F. Way too hot to hang out in there troubleshooting. Me. We need to shut down the array right now. Permanent damage will occur. Probably has actually. If you keep it running. Customer. No way man. My boss would be pissed if I shut this all down. People wouldn't be able to work. Me. Customer. Click. I called back but the tech I'd spoken to before refused to answer my calls so I looked up the main number of the site. When the receptionist answered I told her that I desperately needed to speak to whoever ran engineering. Something in my voice apparently told her I meant business because I got transferred to the director of engineering. I met him in person years later and he actually remembered the call. I explained what I'd been told. Director, what the f and? Calling out away from the phone shut down the machine room. Now. To me. I'll call you back. It turned out they'd had a catastrophic failure of cooling for all of their machine rooms but the tech on duty. The guy I'd spoken to first. Hadn't bothered to tell anybody. They ended up having tons of hardware failures for equipment that had massively overheated. None of which we would replace under warranty. Thank you. Next. I'm traveling in the US at the moment and thanks to the insane hub and spoke system that prevails in this country, by which you fly west to end up east of your departure point, I am between flights. I fly a lot and I don't normally bother to talk to the person next to me, but I detected a French accent when the guy next to me on my last flight spoke, so I initiated a conversation. This is his story done done. The guy in question lives and works on the coast of France. He is employed by a company making dollar sign special sensors that are used in factories to measure the properties of the dollar sign product and ensure that said dollar sign product is meeting specifications. A factory in some podunk town in a flyover state had a dollar sign special sensor that wasn't working properly. Vendor support in France was unable to resolve the problem by liaising with the factory tech guys. So our protagonist was dispatched from western France to the US Midwest several days ago. After three flights and a fairly long drive, our intrepid traveler reached the factory in question and was ushered into the room containing the dollar sign special sensor, whereupon, within a few minutes, he figured out that this equipment, that needs to be in a stable environment to get accurate readings, is sitting in a room without air conditioning. There was a duct, but nowhere conditioned or otherwise, was issuing therefrom, so our hero did exclaim in a charm and French accent, maybe, after all. I wasn't there, why is there no air conditioning? This room needs to be at a stable temperature. A very brief investigation revealed that somebody had unplugged the air conditioning unit. The unit was plugged back in, and the wailing and gnashing of teeth gave way to hazards and rejoicing. Our hero then spent several days sitting around doing nothing and as I type this out on my phone, he is sitting elsewhere in the airport waiting for his flight to Paris. TL. Doctor. Guy flies from western France to bumfuck, Idaho at vast expense to essentially plug in a cable. Thank you. Next. The call. Me. Thank you for calling IT how may I assist you? Customer. The battery backup for the server is making a ton of noise and we can't get any work done. Me. Here's beeping in the background okay. It sounds like it might be running on battery so I'll need you to see if anything else is powered off. Can you look in the server room and read the message on the UPS? 
Customer, I can't go in there. Smoke is coming out of there. What should I do? Me, hang up the phone. Get everyone out of the building. Call 911. Customer, but what about the beeping? Me, it sounds like you are in danger. Please get out and call emergency services. Customer, it's not that much smoke. Let me check anyway. Me, no, stop. Horizontal ellipsis. Phone, distant screams. Customer, there is a lot of smoke and the battery looks like it is on fire. Me, hang up the phone and get the stronger words than I normally use. Out of the building. Needless to say, their server was hosed. Thank you. Next. Greetings, and welcome back to another tale of tech failure support. Sit back, relax, play a round of golf at Sweet Putt and Cakes, and please do the needful. To set the background dollar sign me works as an L2 tech, which is to say the end of the line. My team gets tickets for dollar sign org that were not able to be resolved by the help desk. If we aren't able to resolve the issue, then we will generally engage the engineers at the relevant vendor that, or we tell the dollar sign user they are out of luck. We handle everything from diagnostics to AD administrative tasks. The way our system works is that tickets get assigned to our queue, and we have dispatchers who assign tickets to individual technicians on our team. Here's the cast. Dollar sign me, the protagonist of this story, runs on coffee and lowbrow brand beer. He also has a cape that flutters in the breeze of a Hero Wind branded fan. Dollar sign Goma, one of the L1 agents who works in my office. High charisma, but not all that techy, or literate. Sounds like Goma Pile from the Andy Griffith show. Dollar sign BTM, technical manager for the UK branch of our international support team. Dry sense of humor, arms the size of my head. Cool guy overall. Dollar sign user, needs the needful. Nice lady. Our organization has a Teams channel where technicians from various escalation teams are able to post their questions about tickets they have. It's a cool system and things generally get handled a little quicker as you can post your ticket in there and someone who's familiar with the issue can offer assistance from their area of expertise. There are also sub-channels. The dollar sign L1 desk, onshore and offshore, has their own channel where they can ask questions about calls they get. My office is near the dollar sign L1 area, and I'm the unofficial point of contact for dollar sign L1. Sometimes it's easier for them to just come talk to me instead of following the normal escalation process. When I'm not in the office, they can post their questions to their team's channel. That's where this story begins. Scene. It's 8am, about the time I usually wake up, but I don't typically get to the office until 10am. I like my beauty sleep slash quiet morning time. Why I decided to install the Teams app on my phone I'll never know, but I found myself regretting that decision on this particular morning. I get a notification that goes off very loudly in my ear. Dollar sign Goma, to the dollar sign L1 team chat. At dollar sign me I've got a user on the phone who can't see any of their icons after updating the windows. No, it can't be. He knows I'm not in the office yet. Why me? Why not literally anyone else? Maybe if I just pretend I'm still asleep heel. Dollar sign BTM. What's the username? What's the computer name? What troubleshooting have you done? Have you got screenshots? Oh thank goodness. That'll have him scrambling a while. I start to close my eyes and suddenly, dollar sign Goma, ignores dollar sign BTM. At me I had her go on and reboot her computer, but is just sitting there all black. Dollar sign me, internally, sigh so much for sleeping in. I sit up, blink a couple times, murmur a few obscenities to myself before picking up my phone to see what's up. Dollar sign me, there's nothing on the screen. Did the laptop lose power during the update? What have you tried? Like dollar sign BTM said, we need at least a username and computer name. Dollar sign Goma, I had her reboot again but she says it ain't working. She says she don't wanna talk to me no more and want me to snare the ticket up. Dollar sign me, what do you think dollar sign BTM? Should we send it to the local desktop team at dollar sign users location or have a look at it? Dollar sign BTM, at dollar sign Goma, go ahead and send it to dollar sign L2. We'll take a look. Dollar sign Goma, okay I sent it to at me. Great it's what I always wanted. So I got dressed and went into the office. I pulled up my ticket queue, 
but I didn't see any tickets for the user. It turns out dollar sign Goma did indeed escalate the ticket, but sent it as a high priority ticket to one of the non-US dollar sign L2 techs who was asleep. When a high priority ticket hits our queue, it sends an email to the dollar sign L2 agent advising them that a high priority ticket has been assigned to them. Not only are dollar sign L1 agents not supposed to assign tickets to individual techs themselves, but they need to set the correct priority. I priority tickets off for situations where there's a minor outage. That's strike 1 and 2. Strike 3 will be be a made up scenario in my head where I hit dollar sign goma over the head with a bowling pin. But I digress. I message dollar sign goma to ask about the ticket. Dollar sign me. Where's the ticket? Dollar sign goma I sent it up but dollar sign random offshore 2 tech messaged me and chewed me out. Before I could respond. The offshore dollar sign L2 tech sent me the ticket. I should note at this point, that dollar sign Goma had been on the phone with the user for an hour before finally escalating the ticket. I get the details and call up dollar sign user. Dollar sign me. Hello. My name is dollar sign me and I'm calling about your issue. It looks like you had an update and you're missing your desktop icons. Dollar sign user. Yes. I'm not sure what happened. Dollar sign me. No worries. Let's have a look. I walk the client through opening the command prompt through the run dialog. First clue is that we know Explorer. Eggs is running. Have you figured it out yet? I get the IP address and remote in. I should note here, that prior to calling them, I mapped their C drive to my virtual desktop and found the desktop folder in percent user profile percent still definitely had icons. I remote in and the first thing I notice is that it's not all black. It's in tablet mode. Dollar sign me. Okay, so it looks like you're in tablet mode. Is that intentional? Dollar sign user. No. What's tablet mode? Dollar sign me. It's a setting that changes the way Windows 10 behaves. Tablet mode shows your apps arranged on a grid as opposed to the normal desktop. I disable it. Dollar sign user. My icons. They're back. What did you do? Dollar sign me. I just disabled tablet mode. Dollar sign user. How did you do that? I walk the user through the process of turning tablet mode on slash off. Dollar sign user. That's all it was? Dollar sign me. Yep. That's all it was. I hang up with the client and post back in the team's channel explaining the issue and what I did. Dollar sign BTM. I figured it was something like that. Thanks for your help. Dollar sign Goma. What's tablet mode? I proceed to explain what I just finished explaining to dollar sign user to dollar sign Goma. Dollar sign BTM PMs me. Dollar sign BTM. Are you guys short staffed over there or something? How do we have agents who don't know what tablet mode is? Dollar sign me. Yep. Beats me. But it is what it is. Dollar sign BTM. I figured. Thanks for your help. I know it made your day a little earlier than you probably planned. Thank you. Next. Obligatory disclaimer. LTL. FTP. User equals dollar sign user me equals me. Original ticket. I need to recover some of my emails from July and August. How do I go about this? Dollar sign me. I have left you a VM regarding this. Can you clarify if you need to recover deleted emails or archived emails? Dollar sign user. Hello. Would be emails from July that are no longer in my deleted emails. Dollar sign me. Can you clarify what these emails were? Are these emails you deleted? Are they emails that are missing from a folder? Dollar sign user. Emails that I deleted but are not longer sitting in the recoverable folder. Dollar sign me hi dollar sign user. I have left you a VM to discuss this in further detail. We need more specific information to recover the email such as dates of the email. The sender slash receiver email address and the subject line if possible so we can try and locate these to restore for you. Dollar sign user. It's an email from. Insert generic name. In July. Dollar sign me. I don't have a user by that name in our system. Is this an external email? Can you provide the email address if so? We need specific information to locate an email. Dollar sign user. It's an external email from a client. Insert same generic name. Dollar sign me. Please send the person's email address to me. I can't search for an email without an email address. Dollar sign user. Provides email address. Dollar sign me. There are 20 plus from this email address. Would you like all of them to be retrieved? Dollar sign user. Yes. They are all empty. 
Forwarded all emails to user. Ticket closed. Strong drink poured. Thank you. Next. So a bit of a background as a teenager I worked slash interned at a local children's home. Think mix of orphanage and rehabilitation program. So while working at the home I had pretty typical on-site tech support tasks. We did a lot of setup and tear down for various events. Made sure kids didn't get outside of the allowed website. Act. However this story comes from one of our more interesting tasks. From time to time we would have to go down to the various housing units and fix a computer that was acting up. These desktops had a locking plate on them that prevented them from being opened by the kids. And the tech support department had the only set of keys to these locks. So around lunch time we get a call from one of the units saying their computer isn't working. We come down to the unit, and as soon as we entered a very smoky scent filled the air. So we get to work. We try all the basic tricks to get this thing running again, but we keep getting error and squeals coming from the tower. So my boss has me open the computer up, and out pops a half-eaten frankfurter. It was probably raw when it was placed inside the PC, but it had been slightly cooked by the computer's power supply. We had to take it back to the shop. A closet we worked out of cleaned the parts and then the computer worked like new. But to this day I'm not sure how the hot dog got into the case.